The index function is a treasure trove of functionality, but most of us only know one way to use it. So in this video, I want to expose five lesser known quirks and ways it can be used that will open up a load more possibilities. Let's start by quickly revisiting the syntax for the index function. It's one of the few functions that have multiple syntax options. The first version takes an array of values and the other takes a reference to a cell or range of cells or even multiple ranges. Thankfully, you don't need to choose which syntax to use. Excel will decide that for you based on the inputs. Now the output can be a single value, an array of values, or a reference to a cell or range of cells. The output will depend on the context of the formula. For example, whether the formula is entered in a single cell, nested inside another function, array entered, etc. And we'll see this as we work through the examples. The first quirk is when the array or reference is a single row. The column number argument can be entered in the row number arguments position. Here I'm referencing the range C7 to F7 and returning the value from the second column. But notice the column number argument is in the row number arguments position. Of course, normally we'd write this formula with match to return the column number, as you can see here in cell C21. The formula in cell C16 looks up the value for West, which is in row four, and Q2, which is in column two. Depending on the formula, the return value of index may be a value, as we can see here in cell C16, or it could be a cell or range reference. Now, normally we'd use match to return the row number and the column number arguments, but I want to keep this simple for the next example. If I evaluate the formula here in cell C24 by the formulas tab and then evaluate formula, we can see index on the right hand side of the colon operator and when I press evaluate it returns a reference to cell D9. Now because I have dynamic arrays which are available in Office and Microsoft 365 the results spill to the cells below and we can tell this is a spilled range because the blue border around the cells. However if you have Excel 2019 or earlier you need to first select the four cells that you want the formula entered into, then enter your formula. We want the fourth row and the second column, close parentheses on index, and then I need to press Control, Shift and Enter to enter it as an array formula. And then it enters the four values in the four respective cells. Notice there's no blue border around those cells though, this is not a dynamic array. Now, if you forget to select the cells first, before you enter your formula, row four, column two, close parentheses and control shift and enter, you can see in Excel 2019 and earlier, it will only display the first value because it can't spill the results to the cells below. Now that you know index can return a cell reference, we can use it inside of other functions that take cell references as inputs, like the sum function here. And if we evaluate this formula, you can see it's simply summing the range returned by the first cell reference D6 and the cell reference D9 returned by index. If you place a zero or omit the row number or column number arguments, index will return the whole column or row respectively. In the example here in cell C16, you can see the row number argument is zero and the results of the whole column, D6 through to D9, spill to the cells below. Similarly, if you look at the formula in cell C22, which has the row number argument omitted, and I evaluate it, again, index returns a reference to the range, D6 to D9. It's then summed to return the total, 3239. The same rule applies to the column argument, as you can see here in cell C28, where the column number has been omitted, and the formula has spilled the results to the columns to the right. And likewise, in cell C34, sum is adding up the row of values returned by index. Of course, using zeros or omitting both row and column numbers will return the whole range in the array or reference argument. 
as you can see here. Earlier in example two, we saw how index can return a cell reference. And this ability makes it perfect for returning dynamic named ranges. And if you know me, then you'll probably have seen me use index for this before. However, in this example here, the index function only returned the second cell reference on the right hand side of the colon operator. But looking at the example here, I've got index on both sides of the colon operator. And the colon operator is the range operator. And when you team index with match, it can return dynamic ranges and adapt to changes in input. Like these data validation lists, I can change the range from Q1 to Q4, or from Q1 to Q3, and my index and match formula automatically adapts and returns the adjusted range, which I then sum. Index can also be used either side of the union operator, the comma. In the example here, it's used to return two quarters, which are then summed. So we're summing Q1 plus Q4 to get 6281. But again, because I've linked match to these data validation lists, I can choose different quarters and now it's summing Q2 and Q4. Index can also work with the intersect operator, the space, and that returns a value at the intersection of two ranges. So you can see here it's returning the value for east for Q4. I can change that to north for Q4 or for Q2 and so on. Because I've used match to find the row num and column number arguments for index, it's now dynamic and I can choose different items from the drop down. So effectively, I've used index to create a dynamic range. And if I wanted to convert that into a dynamic named range, all I'd need to do is copy that formula into the defined name box and give it a name. The less commonly used area num argument allows you to reference multiple non-contiguous ranges. The references to the ranges are wrapped in parentheses and separated by a comma. Now I've named the ranges product one and product two, and you can see if I select them from the drop down, it highlights the ranges in the worksheet. The areas are numbered in the order you enter them in. So in this formula, you can see it's product one, that's the first area, and then product two is the second area. My area number argument, if we select it here, you can see it's cell B14, which is this cell. If you look in the formula bar, it's actually a number, but on the face of the cell, it has the word product in front of it. And if I open the format cells dialog box, you can see I've given it a custom number format where I've prefixed the number by the word product. So it's still a number for the purpose of the formula, but it just looks a bit nicer on the face of the worksheet. And I can type a different number in there. For example, if I want to look at product one, now it returns product one for the North region for Q3. And because I've used match, I can change the region or the quarter that I want to look up and simply type in a different product number to return the value from a different area. Now, the rules with this approach are that the area ranges must be on the same sheet, otherwise index will return the hash value error. The area ranges don't need to be the same size. However, if they aren't, it's going to be tricky to choose the correct row or column because it's expecting the structure of the tables to be the same. For example, if we look at this formula, you can see the match function for the column number argument is looking up product one's table and it's finding the quarter in the column number of product one. But we're returning the value from product two's table. And it works because product two has the same number of columns and they're in the same order and they also relate to quarters. So the structure is the same. We have regions and quarters in both tables and that allows me to use match interchangeably from one table to the other without having to switch the cells that match is actually referencing. Well, that's a wrap. I hope you discovered some new features of the index function that you can use. You can download the Excel file for this lesson, including all the examples covered. If you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. 
and why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.